Community media is a powerful tool for connecting organizations with their community. A great example of this is the show Voices of Experience. I sat down with the AFL-CIO members who volunteered to produce the show as they talked about their experience with community media. I'm Bill Moore. I'm uh, the recently elected uh, president of the Minnesota State Retiree Council, AFL-CIO. We're an organization of organizations, uh, an umbrella organization, if you will, for retiree clubs and retiree organizations that are affiliated with unions all around the state. And uh, our goal in life, our purpose of the organization is to uh, keep uh, union members who have retired from their jobs engaged in the labor movement on issues of the day, uh, both issues that affect retirees such as uh, pensions and Medicare, Medicaid, health care, things like that, Social Security, but also uh, issues that engage people who are still in the workforce. So we see ourselves as uh, an agent of change uh, and an opportunity for uh, retired people. To, we haven't retired from life, uh, so there's still plenty of work to do and uh, to be effective in the political arena, particularly you need organization, so that's what we do. It would have been around 2001, and we were still quite a young organization, having only been chartered in 1997. We were discussing all of our communication strategies in the communication committee and discussed a number of different things that we tried, including a short stint of commercials, <laughs> which got too expensive fast. And uh, two of our uh, leaders at the time, Mike Kodjlaboy and the president at, president at that time, Irv Neff, um, who was the second president of the organization, were very enthusiastic and eager to be, in, to be going with a um, community cable program. And Mike was involved here at Suburban Community Channels with producing a show for, and hosting a show, I think, for, um, I believe it was a Veterans of Foreign Wars, but in any case, it was a show that had to do with veterans. So he had the background to do it. And Mike was a driving force in getting the show going. Suburban Community Channels was a uh, friendly home for Mike, and so that's how we ended up here at Suburban Community Channels with the program. So this would be the 10th year we're starting now. We, we are reaching out to the 99%, and we're trying to, trying to present some, some issues uh, that speak directly to their, to their concerns. Uh, on a federal, on federal uh, basis, the uh, Affordable Health Care Act, and we followed all those developments very, very closely. The, uh, uh, prior to that, the Medicare Part D Act on, on prescription drugs uh, it was very, very necessary to explain what that was. The uh, Social Security Administration uh, uh, appeared frequently on our program through their, through their uh, PR spokesperson, uh, Jim Chekowitz who added a new dimension to the program. He, he always sang a song uh, <laughs> dur during, the course, during the course of the program. But we're dealing with state issues as, as well. Uh, President Moore mentioned uh, uh, currently you know, the right to work issue. We did a show on that about a year ago. Uh, and uh, if it does get on the ballot in 2012, we'll, we'll be doing a new show on that. But, uh, the marriage amendment is, is on the ballot in 2012. We did a, a very good half hour, half hour to, uh, program on, on, on that. That's something that's not widely understood. The, uh, the so-called photo ID uh, amendment uh, will, will be on the ballot. And we, uh, we had a very thorough, thorough program on, on that as well. So we're, we're filling a gap here. People don't always get the, uh, knowledge that they should have or, or they, they, only, they only see it in a headline and here we have a, here we have a good, good discussion on, on, on those, those issues. And it's an informational resource, especially now that we've been yes. able to get shows up on YouTube and, and Facebook and that, you know, particularly it, it, with reference to this, I mean, Dan mentioned the, uh, the campaign against the so-called right to work laws, but we've been able to refer people. You know, that if they miss it on the, the suburban cable channel or they're not in this area and can't pick it up, we can say, you want to know about right to work, there's a good show about this. Or you want to know about what's happening with health care, there's a good show about it, and here's where you get to it. And so it's been a huge uh, informational resource uh, for retirees and for people beyond our organization. So 
the, the variety of the information, and it's all important that's, that's uh, been made available to anyone who would take the time to watch. Um, I think you can't get that anywhere else. I, I just, I'm thinking of all the uh, talk shows and whatever, they're not anywhere near as, uh, as potent with uh, information and good information as, as uh, what's done here with Voices of Experience. Well, where else would you get a, a guy that'll come in from the Social Security Administration, give you a great background, and then sit and play a guitar and sing a song you wrote about Social Security? I mean, we've had some fun things yeah. go on here. I've been involved with production um, for about four years, and uh, uh, you know, it's hard to believe, but I'm the best they got when it comes to director, so that's <laughs> my role. Uh, my local union said, well, the AFL-CIO Retiree Council is looking for people to fill up seats, I guess. So I went over, and Martha was president, and she said, you know, we're looking for people to help with the show. And I thought, well, gosh, that sounds interesting. I could go over there. And I work with Russ uh, Thornell, and, and uh, uh, you know, I, I don't know how much help I was, but... Uh, you know, I thought I would pick his brains, and, and not for any other reason, but just for general knowledge. And um, uh, then um, two things happened. Uh, Russell decided to leave, um, be with family and, and, uh, and the like. And it seemed like the technology that we were using here changed. Uh, so he was doing tape-to-tape -tape stuff, and, you know, I couldn't keep up with them, and it was just like a blur to me. And then about the time that took over, then we went to the, you know, and I don't even know the terminology. That's why it's so embarrassing for, for anyone to say Roger knows what he's doing because <laughs> it, it's, I'm really lost. But then the technology changed. We went to computerized uh, 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 recording and, and, uh, and the like. But um, so I just kind of grew into it. I was looking for something to do when I retired. I joined the council. The council was looking for some help. I got up here. Russell needed to go. Seemed like it was okay if I, you know, did what Russell was doing, and I have not measured up to his good, good, uh, good work. But that's kind of how it happened for me. Well, we have a right now a four-person crew. We've done it with two people, and most shots are with three. Roger here is the boss and crew chief. Uh, I am the golfer, the lowest ranking guy on the team, and in between we've got Larry and we've got Mary now, and she's learning the whole show from the bottom up. Uh, we do everything. We set up the, we set up the stage, we, we're all sound technicians, we're all lighting people, we're all camera people during the show. Uh, Roger will be sitting in front of the big panel, which reminds me of a cockpit of a Boeing 747. I, I, I don't understand any of those uh, particular gauges and so on. Larry will sit back there and snap on graphics. I'll keep an eye on the sound. Uh, they, they volunteered. I mean, this is a complete volunteer from Dan and Bill, who have hosted, and, and Martha, who you know served as president and, and the founding uh, um, meetings and all. We're, all of us are just volunteers, so that's, um, that's an interesting thing, too. I think organizationally it's a big challenge to, um, to keep volunteers, to keep recruiting volunteers, have people trained. In case something happens, you want to have backup and you want to have as many people trained as you can so you don't burn out your crew. I mean, these folks work hard doing a lot of volunteer work. And, and, and I want to make sure that we thank the Suburban Channel folks because without them, I mean, it's just like starting over some days for us. And without your help, all of the folks here have just been great, generous, and patient, and we appreciate that greatly.